Hey, good evening, everyone. Marty Mazur here, the 9th of March, 2023, Thursday, with your end of week market snapshot. This will also be the Friday morning message, just because I have a very full schedule tomorrow. And then the economic update will come to you over the weekend for sure. You won't get that tomorrow. So um, I want to start with the VIX again because my parting comment yesterday morning was that stock market technicals looked ambiguous, the VIX looked bearish, right? Now recall that yeah, I drew a line right here and I said that we are testing this right here and we still had these bullish divergences. So right here, it looks, you know, this is a bullish setup for the VIX, which means it's bearish for stocks. Remember VIX measures or tracks implied volatility on S&P 500 options. Typically, the correlation is negative, meaning VIX up, stocks down. So this is just an absolutely gigantic candle today. The VIX really popped like 18% on the day. So this technical pattern you know, played out perfectly. We stopped right on support, and we had bullish divergences, and there we go. Could have easily gone the other way on different news today, but again, the technicals be what they are. Remember, we looked at... You know, we looked at a bull flag pattern right here. We got our we got our breakout above it. We had bullish divergences. Had the same thing here. Here we had a double top, and we had bearish divergences. So that was bearish. Remember that. Here, you know, bullish falling wedge again. You had at least on the RSI, and then you got your buy signal here, and kaboom, you're off to the races again. So this right here was looking bullish. You know, still does. Uh, you break above that area right there with some momentum, and that would be a really, really ugly scenario for stocks. Okay, so uh, speaking of stocks, now folks, remember it was the monthly and the weekly technical analyses way back when, you know, beginning of last year, where we drew the green line here. And again, that was our bear market bottom target uh, based on bear market outside of recession, Again, I said if we get it, if we're in recessionary conditions, we're going to have to set a lower target. Right now, we like 3,200, and that that would be based on earnings declining in a recessionary scenario. So, as you know, we, we broke out above the um, bear market trend line, and now in March we're coming back below it. So, right now on the monthly chart, folks, this is bearish, and on the weekly time frame, so we've given up the. 50-week moving average, and of course, again, we've, we're right now, as we speak, we're losing the trend line, bear market trend line. So right now, boy, if this breaks now, this will be a failed breakout, not a good thing. Remember, this is our, to me, a very clear inverse head and shoulders pattern, very classic, actually. The shoulder, yes, is usually lower than this shoulder. This is our... Uh, this is our neckline right here, which happens to be in the trend line. This would be the test, and these are these are not low probability patterns. They tend tend to be pretty reliable, and that would be bullish if we can break back above there. But as I've said every time I've shown you this, that's not our base case. Our base case is ultimately that we break down. It, it could be now. I'm a little skeptical. There's very interesting things going on in the banking sector that's kind of freaking people out today. Certainly, financials got walloped. We'll spend more time on that. That's not the purpose of this video. And I want to let that play out and learn a little bit more about what's going on there. No doubt what went on at Silicon Valley Bank today and with its stock price and, and what it's doing to try to raise capital and what its customers are doing, I, I can get why that would make some people nervous. But again, we'll, uh, we'll give you more texture on that when we know more about it and can speak intelligently on it. So on the one-year daily chart, like I said on Wednesday, giving up the 20-day moving average, really, really not a good sign. Losing the 50-day on Wednesday and then closing down below the 200 and below the, the bear market trend line is no bueno, to put it mildly. So right now, there is a pretty solid what's called put wall at the 3900 strike on the S&P 500. The reason they call that a wall, right? And we've talked a lot over the last year or two about how this works, how dealers short or go short, sell puts to folks like us who buy puts to hedge. They then need to protect themselves because they're on the hook for the downside. So they then short in one form or another the underlying security. 
And shorting a security is selling a, a security, which could exacerbate the downside move. Okay, so what tends to happen is as the option holders get close to their strike, they will tend to monetize them and take their profit. There, there's theta or there's time left on those options, so there's some real value there. Now, when they monetize or sell their puts, well, then the dealers don't need to be short those securities anymore, right? So then they buy. Remember, a short is a borrowed security that you have to ultimately buy back and give back to the lender. So buying securities does what? Provides upside pressure, all else equal. So that's where this wall comes in, right? So again, we get close to, you know, in, in the example I'm giving you, right, 3,900, say it's right there on the S&P, put owners, exit those positions, put dealers, put sellers, no longer need the shorts, they buy the shorts, support, right, support. Now, we come into tomorrow, and if we get a hot jobs number, if the market continues to trade on that kind of information like it has been, and we break down through there with momentum, okay, we could see these put buyers simply just roll them down. And we've done that in hedging. You gotta be very dynamic. And roll them down, say to 3,800, right? Well, what happens if they roll them down? That means they have new positions that the dealers have to short the underlying to protect themselves, creates more downside pressure. 3,900 could be some very meaningful support for the market. So I suspect that there were some long positions that were taken, right? Well, smart short-term traders tend to, to put in stop losses. Okay? So let's say a whole bunch of people went long today you know, at 3,900 or just above there, what have you, and then put their stop loss orders, which means get out of that position automatically uh, at some level below 3,900 because maybe they know that you know, this put wall could be rolled and this, could, this thing could get exacerbated. So that provides more downside oomph, right? Because if people went long today and that's kind of what held the market up a little bit, let's say, and then they break through that level tomorrow and those stop losses hit, right? Here we go. Okay, so there's enough going on and there's enough momentum. There was enough volume today and enough action in the options pit, yada, yada, that, you know, we could see this 3,800. Remember I said below a certain level, there's just nothing keeping us for 3,800. Now, I think for what it's worth, that 3,800 will be a real bounce target, right? So if I were a short-term trader and I would happen to be fortunate enough to be short right here, um, I would look to go long, you know, at 3,800. Uh, I might even look to go long at 3,900 like I'm sure a lot of people did today, okay? Uh, but if I broke through that, I'd be losing some money. Now, if we get a weak jobs number tomorrow and the market continues to trade like it's been trading, and the reason I say that as you look across asset classes and you look at the action bonds and so forth, there's enough action in other places that says that you know, some markets are discounting recession risk. So a weak jobs number would justify the recession risk scenario, perhaps. And if stocks start trading on that, which we think they ultimately will, which is what you know, gets us to our ultimate bear market target, is that the market basically succumbs to recessionary pressures and lower earnings and things that I keep talking about over and over again. And typically those markets are melting down while the Fed is cutting interest rates, right? But what's been happening so far, and I think we should assume it's going to continue to happen, is that if we get a weak jobs number, that's going to get the market thinking, oh, the Fed is going to stop talking so hawkish, no way they'll do 50 basis points on the 22nd, yada, yada. And we could see a significant bounce off of that level right tomorrow if you get a weak jobs number. I don't know what we're going to get, quite frankly. I'm convinced if our, if our economic assessment is correct that they're going to get really weak you know, going forward. Um, I didn't expect that right now, but I looked at analysis today that said the construction industry may see significant job losses for February. So we'll see. And if, if there's other areas other than that as well, well, then maybe, maybe it will be lower than expected. We had higher than expected 
jobless claims today, I think by about 15,000. But apparently in New York City teachers, when they're off, what is it, spring break maybe for them, um, they get to apply for unemployment and 16,000 of them applied for unemployment, which is about the amount that was over what was expected. Now, the market rallied on that, by the way. So early this morning when the jobs number came out, futures market and then the cash market actually was having a pretty good day for a while. Next week, we get a CPI print. Once we get past February, folks, the inflation data has some pretty favorable base effects. They're going to make it look like the year over year inflation is coming down all things being equal, right? Nothing else changes. It's going to look like inflation is coming off the boil more so. So the market's going to have that to react to as well. Ultimately, if we're right on our economic thesis, we're going to get our recession. And if we get our recession and corporate earnings do what they do, and then in the estimates of corporate earnings are what they are, then we're going to get to that setup that we're looking for that is ultimately very bullish because of what we'll be able to do down at those levels. So that's actually something we're looking forward to just from a pure tactical standpoint going forward, if indeed it gets to that. So, you know, we have a lower low here. If we got a rally tomorrow morning, these things turn up and you're going to have a pretty bullish looking short term pattern for stocks, particularly if you recapture the 50 and the 20 day moving averages. On the hourly chart, so 60 day, 60 minute, falling out of bed here, right? You had your sell signal right there. You got way overbought, broke down through this 3941 level that was you know, pretty good support right here. In fact, you can take this all the way back. So all the way back oh, to you know, mid January, uh, mid to late January, this served as support and then 4050 up here broke down through that and we just kind of worked our way down. Boom, 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 broke through that today. Uh, 3890, I'm going to say 3900. And we're right on that, by the way, in the in the in, in the uh, futures overnight future session. Would, if it, we were open right now, we would open below that. And that's not so good, as I just illustrated for you on the daily chart. But if we turn back up, we're going to have a really good look here. And I think we'd see a lot of money come rushing in. So we'll see. This could be the beginning, you know, of, of that next leg down. It won't be an, uh, one big drop down to our target. You know, it'll be the market, you know, fighting its way down, finding support, breaking back through levels and stuff. So I think, folks, we are going to, you know, chop. I think the market will find a range and you know, short term swing traders will have a field day probably for a while. Ultimately, if general conditions evolve the way they, we think they will, the way our, our current assessment suggests they will, and we'll have our opportunities to prepare for the next bull market at lower levels. And let me say it one more time, either that's going to happen or conditions are going to rise to where we are now or some level in between. And we'll start then right now. We have to continue to hedge portfolios, continue to own the things that we do that are non-correlated to stocks and, um, and try to mitigate as much of the downside as we can, keep the cash that we have on hand on hand. And I did tell you the other day, though, folks who have brought in new capital after we see the jobs number, we let things settle in there. We fully expect to take on some positions, but we're not going to invest it broadly across our core at this point. And, and clients, you've seen a couple of adjustments last week and one early this week. And actually that was getting a little more defensive. You know, we got a little bit out of our industrials exposure, a little bit out of our materials exposure, a little bit out of our mining exposure. We added to healthcare, looks, which looks really, really cheap and opportune to us right here. We added to our consumer staples and we, we added one healthcare position, individual stock, and we added some exposure to uh, our Brazilian ETF. Non-client viewers, I know I say this in disclaimer, I am not giving you any advice. Please do not trade on what I am telling you. Do your own research, talk to your own advisors, what have you. Uh, you, you don't know the internal dynamics of our portfolios. You don't know how we're hedging individual positions, the overall market and so forth. So we do things uh, very careful from a risk reward perspective. So when I talk about sectors or if I mention a stock or something that I like or what have you, you're never going to know the whole story and how we are, you know, positioning that, you know, sizing it, that sort of thing. Again, I can't 
emphasize enough how this is not advice for non-client subscribers to the blog. Folks, thank you so much. I'm just going to leave it there. There's so much more we could talk about going on in the world. There's so many more things I could show you. I thought about pulling up bonds and commodities and probably start doing more of that and, and talk about cross-asset stuff. And haven't, I don't think we've looked at the dollar lately or other currencies. We can start doing more of that too. Over the weekend, you'll get our economic update, which will be interesting, especially with the, uh, with the jobs numbers coming out tomorrow. And uh, have a great weekend. Thanks again. Take care. Bye-bye.